Hello, hello, sweet peeps. How are you doing today? One more day with you guys, with Daddy. Hi, Daddy. How are you? I'm doing great, and it's another beautiful day. Um, just glad to be here with you all, and it's good to see you back. Thank you for having me again, Saw. Oh, you're welcome, and so good to be with you in one more video class. Yes? Yes. Another, another one for the books. Yes, yes. So now let's get started. We're going to start this master class with phrasal verbs because native speakers love what? Using phrasal verbs. So knowing them will help you sound more fluent, more natural, and they help you understand native speakers as well. So in this section, you're going to learn another, the second group of phrasal verbs. And then in the end, you'll complete a quiz and move on. And tomorrow, you'll learn another group of phrasal verbs. So let's start with our first group of phrasal verbs. Group yes, one. So we start another 50 group, yes, 50 phrasal verbs. Yes? Yes. Would you like to mention something? Nope. I'm okay. Yes. Okay, so we start 50 more phrasal verbs divided in five classes. The first one that you can read. To ache for, to really want something or someone. Like, man, I'm sure aching for some chocolate ice cream. It's like for craving for it. I'm craving it. Man, yes. Man, I'm aching for your love. <laughs> sure, aching for attention. For sure. That's a good one. Good pick. Go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Yes, this is to wake for it. Yes. The first one. Okay, so, yes, you, you told about being loved. Yes. Yeah. That's a good picture. To wake for love, you know. Uh, Take a picture of us. Yes, yes. That could be a good one. Eh? <laughs> yes, that is to wake for, yes. He was lonely oh. and aching for love. I was lonely. Yes. That is a really romantic one and a good one, phrase of verb. You got another now we... what? You got another one to put up there? Another one? Exactly. So this H4 then it's uh, a good one to to see what it means. Yes, that is a great and daddy already. <laughs> Shared uh, a good one for that one, yes, daddy. So this is a very nice romantic phrase of verb. Now we live, we really use this about a romantic relationship. So make sure you use that appropriately. And to wait for something or someone is when you, you really, really want that something or someone. For example, he was lonely and aching for love. So this is perhaps a little more of a poetic phrasal verb. You will probably hear it in novels, stories, movies, TV, he was aching for love. So maybe you want to use 
that in your vocabulary, but you likely hear eating romance movies or romance novels. Now you may be more likely to use taking for someone. And uh, let's say your husband is overseas on a business trip and he will be gone for three, two, three weeks. And you might say, I'm aching for my husband. So if you're talking with your family, friends, or your colleagues, you could say, oh, I'm really aching for my husband. He's been gone for two, three weeks already. And then let's go ahead. Yeah. Yes, Daddy. That was good. Good job. So to beef up. Thank to beef up. Yeah. Slip it to a slim gym. So <laughs> to beef up, to make something or someone strong. Um or or more important to beef it up. So like I go to the gym, I need to beef up. So I need to drink my milkshakes. I need to eat my carbs. And that's like bulking up, beefing up. Can you show me where the gym is? Is it that way or is it that way? <laughs> <laughs> to, or to make something better, just beef it up a little bit. Make it better, make it, make it bigger, you know, make it stronger. But yeah, make, basically just making it stronger or bigger. That's what I got. Go ahead, Saw. Oh, amazing, yes. That's number two. As Daddy says, to beef up. This is a fun one. When you beef something up, you make it stronger or more important. Now we do use this in the context of bodybuilders and they can beef themselves up because more muscular so you can use that in a fitness context but we also use this in more of a business context so surprisingly you might say i need to beef up my resume i need to make my resume stronger or more important i need to beef up my communication skills for example and uh, that's good could you read again daddy those examples yeah to beef up i need to beef up my resume because it's just just too small Got to make it bigger. Got to make it better. To beef up, I need to beef up my communication skills. I need to beef up my Portuguese. Yes, you will. Soon. Hey, Zep. <laughs> hey, Zep. Okay. Good. Mm, to make up with someone. We need to, me and Saw got in an argument the other day, but we made sure we made up before we went to bed. So we make, we make up every time we get in an argument, not very often that we do. Um, yeah, so if you get in an argument with a friend or relative or your wife or spouse, husband, you need to make up before you go to bed. Never go to bed angry. To forgive someone after a argument or dispute. Or you can just say, baby, you don't need no makeup. <laughs> don't need no makeup on your face. Go ahead, Saul. 
<laughs> okay. I actually I don't I don't use it. I don't wear. <laughs> you don't need. So, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, that one. Just a lipstick. Eh? <laughs> That's mm. number three to makeup, and in this context, we're talking about to makeup with someone, with someone, to makeup with someone. It's when you forgive someone. After an argument or a dispute in a family context, young kids agree a lot, right? And older kids too. <laughs> But you might say to your son, your daughter, you need to make up with your sister. You need to make up with your brother. You need to make up with your cousin or a friend and to list a, sp uh, a specific one. and uh, it means you need to forgive that person stop being angry at that person stop fighting with that person so we definitely use this in a social context a family context but you can absolutely use this in a professional context. Co-workers fight as well. There are disagreements in companies. So you might say to one co-worker, Sally, you need to make up with Mark. You work on the same team. You have to get along. You need to make up with each other, which other, with each other. <laughs> And The next one, Betty. Good job. You did a great job on that. Thank to you. nail down, to put your roots in the ground, it's pretty much the same. To understand the exact details, she says, to make a firm decision or to, yeah. So we decided that we were going to move to Australia, <laughs> we're gonna lock it down. We're gonna nail it down and make sure we're going. Yeah, we're it's it plans, we're not gonna let it go. So yeah, nail it down or um, you know, we could say tack it down, nail it down. Um, yeah, put your roots down. I can't think of something right now. Go ahead, Saw. Okay, yes, great. Yes, this number four to nail down. This is when you understand the exact details of something or you get a firm decision on something. So let's say you're planning a conference and to have a general idea of the conference. It it should take place in summer. It, it can be the general topic or the theme, but when are the exact, uh, what, what is specific topics, who is specifically will be the the keynote speaker who specifically will be presenting who will you hire uh, to cater the conference yes you need to nail down those details so you need to either understand the exact details Or you need to make a firm decision on who's going to cater when the conference uh, uh, the ex uh, will exact take place. So that is useful phrase or verb. You can use it in a business context or a social context also. 
Okay. That's good. Good job. Could you read again? Yeah. Oh, to nail down. down. To make sure that this decision is nailed down and it's firm and it's we all understand that it's locked in and no changing it now. Confirm. Do you confirm? Good. All right. We're nailing it down. Okay. Great. To open up to someone or something. To open up. I'm opening up my heart to you. Um, or we need to sit down and have a talk. And I need you to open up to me. I need to hear how you feel. Is to share personal feelings, emotions that you normally don't share. So like with your best friend or your spouse or to your brother, or your sister, or your mom or your dad, relatives that you love and care about. Those are the only ones you really going to open up to anyways. People that you care about and you love. So just open up, open up your mind, your heart, your soul to someone that you care to talk to about your life. Okay, so. Yes. Good. So good your example says. There's this number five to open up. When you open up to someone, you talk very freely about your feelings or your emotions. Things that make you uh, quite vulnerable, things probably you don't share with everybody. For example, after years, she finally opened up about his death. So for many years, there was this tragic death, perhaps. And, uh, well, she didn't really talk about it she didn't talk about her feelings about the death but then after years she opened up she started talking free freely about how she felt the circumstances how she's dealing with it those types of things her inner feelings and emotions now notice I didn't use to someone. I could say she opened up to her family about his death. So you have about and then the specific topic. And to the specific people. You commonly hear people say, I've never opened up to anyone to anybody like this before. If someone says you to you, uh, they're basically, they, they feel very comfortable with you if they open up to you, around you. They, they feel like they can share their inner thoughts, feelings, emotions, and that's a very positive thing. It shows you have have a very close relationship. Yes. Could you read again? Yeah, to open up. To open up to someone or something. I don't know about something. I guess you could talk to a computer. <laughs> but yeah, to open up, to share your personal feelings, emotions, and and just be sincere to your loved ones. All right. Great, great. All right. Next one. To slip into, or you can say. To slip into. Baby, I bought you a new dress. You want to go slip into it so we can go out to dinner? Or you can slip out of it or slip into it. Or to, what do you got? Too quickly. Put on a piece of clothing to slip into, to, to slide into, go slip on your socks, go slip on your shoes, go slip on your pants, 
Will you go slip on your jacket so we can get out of here? <laughs> Pretty simple word. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be confused with slip up. We're slipping into slip up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slip up is you accidentally said something that you shouldn't have said. Oops, I slipped up. But that's another that's another one for another time. Go ahead. Saw. Yes, for sure. We can bring it also. Great. So Ed, that one the number seven, uh just uh no, it's not the number seven, Ed. No. That is the number six. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, just to yeah. sleep in so yes. So to sleep in so something now is when you quickly put on a piece of clothing. So this is a very specific phrase of verb. It's only used with clothing. Now, for example, this shirt is quite pretty. Is it my my mine? <laughs> but let's be honest. It's not the most comfortable, that one. So after I'm done recording this video, I'm going to slip into a t-shirt. I'm going to put on a t-shirt. Or if it's first thing in the morning and you're in your house coat, but then you hear your doorbell, you might uh, quickly slip into some sweatpants and answer the door. So it's simply another way to say, put on. Okay, the next one. Yeah, yeah just slip into. <laughs> uh, just just slip into them. my boxers. <laughs> I'm gonna slip <laughs> in the shower. No, I don't know if that works. Slip into the shower, slide into the shower. Yeah, <laughs> that works. All right, next yeah. one. Number seven was to to stand by something or someone. Are you you could do a stand by someone or something? Yeah. Stand by me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help <laughs> you carry on. It's a good song. So yes. stand by like... Um, and you're a good singer. Uh -huh. And you're a good singer. Oh, thanks. Thank you. So yes. to stand by like... um. So someone calls me and they're asking, what should I do? Uh, I'm sitting here at the job site, and I said, well, just one sec. Stand by. I'll give you a call in a minute. Um, or, yeah, just stand by. Or you can say, "I'm." hey, go stand by that person over there. I want to take a picture. And you can use it that way, too. Go stand by that sign over there and take a picture of you and the sign. But, yeah, stand by to wait briefly um for a minute for someone to contact you about something that you are waiting for the information about so stand by and i'll give you the information in a minute and then you say copy i register i copy <laughs> 10 4 good buddy <laughs> cb terms <laughs> radio yes okay go ahead so so good yes yes thanks yes to stand by something when you stand by something it's used to show that you still support or believe something so I might say we stand by our opinion that interest rates need to increase. 
So that's my opinion. That's my belief. Interest rate needs to increase. I stand by that. I still support that. I still believe that. So you will hear this a lot from people in power, politicians, executives in business. They will have an opinion. Yes. Yeah. And have a belief. And then they will state, I stand by that. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's, can you read that part, Danny? And if, uh, stand by, well, I mean, like, I forgot to put that part in when I was mentioning, but like, I would, I would be like, no matter what saw, uh, his opinion, I'm always going to stand by her opinion and decision because she is my, um, my significant other. I'm always going to stand by her decision, no matter if she's right or wrong, because we are one. So I'm always stand by what she has to say. That's so amazing. Beautiful. I say the same and I have the same opinion also. No? And yeah. uh, yes, of course, this uh, phrasal verb uh, is a lot to do with that example you, you have mentioned. Yes? Okay. So, and if so, why? Uh, I stand by that. Yes, I stand by that. And yeah. the reason simply is the approach that the president and go. Yes, so um, now we also use this with uh, stand by someone. When you stand by someone, it means that you support someone. Usually when something negative has happened. So let's say that your coworker was accused of stealing from the company, but you know your coworker didn't do it. You might say, I stand by her. I stand by her, which means you are going to support her in this difficult time. Yes? Could you read it? this example yeah. to stand by someone um to just basically support their decisions uh or their actions because you know that person i mean even if they did or didn't do something and you are and you're a part of them you will stand by their decision of course then you will have to recommend them but no, to support them to to yeah to make sure that this the decision is make sure that it is um nailed down. <laughs> no. But yeah, to support someone, especially in a difficult time, to stand by her or him, to support beliefs and opinions or ideas. To stand by something or someone. Okay. Great. Yes. So amazing. The next one. To wind down. To relax after a busy, stressful day. Yes. My sweetheart, I need to wind down. Will you get me some tea, some iced tea, and come rub my feet for me? She said, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll take care of you. Or if the other way around. i take care of you. <laughs> Baby, the kids were crazy all day today. I need to wind down. And I said, okay, I'll give you a massage. I'll help you wind down. 
I'll run you a bath. That's amazing. Yes, I'll run you a bath to help you wind down. Or some people like to go to the bar and have a couple of drinks to wind down or at home. But yeah. Yes, sir. I don't know where they came up with wind down. Because it's always wind up when you're when you're reeling something up. Like wind up that cord over there. Wind up that string. We gotta wind that all up. So uh, I don't know where wind down come from. That's weird. I just thought of that. Okay, go ahead, Saul. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes, that's one, the number eight is to wind down. So, as he told you, this, this is an excellent phrase over because it means to relax after a busy or stressful day. So you might say, I always read at the end of the day to wind down, to help me to wind down. I always read at the end of the day or I go for a walk after work to wind down. So it just means to relax, but it's another way of saying it and it implies that you are very busy or stressed out to wind down. Could you read both examples again? Uh, yeah, I always read at the end of the day just to help me wind down. Um, I was going to mention also, okay, um, uh -huh. you could say, I go for a walk after work to help me wind down or unwind. That's That was the other one, unwind. And I, was, I just came up, forgot about that one. So I go for a walk after work to help me unwind from a busy day or to wind down from a busy day. So I think that's where that wind down actually came from was unwind. Because you're wound up, uh, you're wound up so tight. Because you're stressed. That's that's the, and then so you need to unwind, to uh, to relax, to 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 just be comfortable again. Yeah, but yeah, yes. you get wound up, wound up, so tight. And then so, yeah, unwind or down, uh, wind down. Yeah. No. To wind down or to unwind. You could you could write that up there if you want to unwind. Oh, okay. Good, good to know. Good to tell them also. To add. To, yeah, add yes, add that one. So to zone out, which I do a lot. <laughs> To zone out, to stop paying attention for a short period of time or a long period of time. You can be in another world while someone's talking to you. And that's zoning out. Thinking about something completely different as someone's rambling on to you and you don't care about what they're saying. Or even if you do and you just kind of zoned out. To another world. To Pandora. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I tend to uh, zone out when I'm talking to my boss because I'm thinking about what I need to be doing instead of listening to what he's saying or trying to pay attention to what he's saying too much and I zone out and not even hear what he said okay so yes yes Great addition. So this is the number nine to zone out. This is when you stop paying attention for a short period of time. Now we've uh, also done also done this, especially when you're a kid 
on school and your teacher is talking and you just zone out. Now, generally people zone out because they don't have interest in a particular topic. For example, whenever people talk about sports, I zone out. I just stop listening and I start thinking about something else in my own head and I'm not listening to the conversation about sports. <laughs> For example, I zone out, I stop paying attention, but then when the conversation changes, I will pay attention again. So it's always for that short period of time. Yes? Could you read the, this example? To zone out. Whenever people talk to me, I zone out. No. Whenever people talk about sports, I zone out. Because I don't care. I don't care about sports. Or when they talk about politics, I zone out. Don't yes. need to hear it. It's a boring. Nothing we can do. We can't change it. So, no. Okay. The worst one is the zone out when you're driving. And then you're like, wait a minute. Where did that last five miles go? <laughs> I zoned out. While yes. driving. All right. The, net, the number 10, yes. Our last one. Mm -hmm. To turn in. Or or to turn in or go to bed, to hit the hay, to uh, crawl into the fart sack, to turn in. Or you could just say turn in. Um, all right, guys, it's time to turn in. Let's eat some supper and turn in and, and go to bed. Or you could say, I need to turn in my paperwork. Um my homework you got to turn in my homework so there's a couple meanings for that if you wanted to use it if you hear it it's not always about going to bed to turn in to turn into turn in someone because they're a bad person oh yeah that's not good that's but yeah to turn in to something i turn into the whole Right, a smash. I turned in to the Hulk. Uh, <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Good addition. Yes, good add. So, this number 10 to turn in. This is a very useful phrasal verb because it simply means to go to bed. It's another way of saying to go to bed. And it's very common. So, of course, you can say, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. But you can also say, I'm tired, tired, I'm going to I'm going to turn in. I'm going to turn in. And it's extremely commonly used. So I suggest you use it you can use it as a suggestion hey it's getting late and you have that job interview tomorrow and you should turn in you should go to bed or you can use it in question form as well what time did you turn in what time did you go to bed? Yes. Are you ready for your first quiz? So here are the questions of, of, of course, uh, hit pause. Take as much time as you need. And when you're ready, hit play and I will share the answers. So you can go ahead and hit pause now. Here are the answers. Go ahead and hit pause and figure out how you did.
How did you do on the quiz? Make sure you share your score in the comments below. And let's continue with the next in the next class. Uh, it means tomorrow. Yes. So thanks to one more day that it should be with us and all our followers. And uh, please subscribe in our channel because we are just, uh, we need that. We're in the beginning and we need that to be here for you guys. Yes, Daddy? Yes. Do you yeah. agree? Do you guys subscribe, please. Um, and it'll help us out a lot. We, we're enjoying this time, and I hope you guys all are all, also. So thanks for coming again. It's great yes. to see your faces. So thank you, Saul, for having me again. Um, yes, I'm enjoying this time with you all. And oh, thank uh, you. you are having just as much of a good time as we are. Thank you. Yes. You're so welcome and everybody. And uh, I really appreciate this time with you. And see you tomorrow. Yes. See you guys tomorrow. Kisses. Have a good time there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.